In modern World of Warcraft, entering a raid or dungeon is easy. All you have to do is get to the required level. However, this was not always the case, and you needed to be attuned to a dungeon raid in order to be able to do it. Blizzard explored this concept since the beginning of Vanilla WoW, but it was in the Burning Crusade expansion that the idea flourished and nearly all instance content required the player to fulfill previous conditions to be able to do them. In this video, we'll be exploring the different attunements in the order a player would have to do them to access the endgame content. Heroic Dungeons were introduced at the launch of the Burning Crusade. They were max level versions of normal dungeons with a level difficulty ramped up and much better loot. Getting into them required the players to buy keys from different reputation vendors around Outland and the Caverns of Time. And in order to be able to buy them, you had to be revered with each faction linked to the group of dungeons in the zone. For Hellfire Citadel, you had to be revered with Thrallmar if you're Horde, and Honored Hold if you're Alliance. For Caverns of Time, you needed Keepers of Time Reputation, Sonara Expedition for the Coilfang Reservoir, the Lower City for Akendun, and finally the Shatar Reputation for Tempest Keep Dungeons. We also have to mention both the Shattered Halls and Architraz required a key to access. However, only one person in the party has to have it or ask a rogue with 300 heavy lockpicking to open these doors. These instances are the Shattered Halls, Shadow Labyrinth, and the Architraz. The only dungeon that required the player to do an attunement questline are the ones in the Caverns of Time. The player is expected to go there and start the quest to the Master's Lair. After that, they have to do the Old Hillsbrad Foothills dungeon, giving you access to the Black Morass, which is important since it will come up later for another attunement quest. Now, except for Mactheridon, Gruul's Lair, and the Sunwell Plateau, all the raids of the Burning Crusade require the player to do a quest chain. That means open world questing, some grinding, and doing a fair share of heroic dungeons. To start the journey of getting attuned, a player must reach level 68, and to complete certain parts of the process, own a flying mount. These attunements remained necessary to enter the raids up until patch 2.1.1 in the original release of Phase 3 during Classic Burning Crusade. Once a player gets to level 68, they have to travel to Deadwing Pass and speak to Archmage Alturus. And thus, the journey begins in the caves and catacombs near the Tower of Karazhan. The Archmage will ask the player to investigate the arcane disturbances and the relentless activity of the spirits near the haunted Tower of Medivh. After finishing these tasks, we're tasked to contact another mage from Dalaran and to the Alteric Mountains we go. We find the mage on the shores of Lake Lordomir, and he'll send us to Outland, finding Khadgar, Medivh's last disciple and holder of the key. The future guardian is found in the middle of Shatra. However, he'll tell us that he has split the key into three pieces since he was stranded in Outland, and hid them inside three magically sealed containers located in three dungeons. Luckily for us, we can obtain them in the normal versions, and thus we venture into the Shadow Labyrinth to get our first piece of the puzzle. After defeating Murmur, the player can open the arcane container, spawning the Guardian of the Fragment that will loot the first key fragment after defeating it. Khadgar will then send us to finish the other two dungeons in Outland so we can get the other two fragments. After entering the Steam Vault, the player and his party will have to defeat the first boss, a Hydromancer Thespia, locate the container in the water close to the boss's platform, kill the Key Guardian, and obtain his fragment. Then, we venture inside Architraz, defeat Zarek the Unbound, and in the next room we find the last key fragment. We then go back to Khadgar so we can finally reforge the key. But there's a catch. As a matter of fact, the key requires the Master's Touch, Medivh, but he's been dead for a while and the last time we saw him was during the second Legion invasion. Luckily for us, our friends in the Bronze Dragonfly can help us go back in time and relive the opening of the Dark Portal where we can find a past version of Medivh. After helping him open the Dark Portal and defending him from the relentless assault of the Infinite Dragonflight, Medivh will touch the restored Apprentice's key with his magic and after returning to Khadgar, obtain the Master's key. This key will finally let us enter Karazhan. Now, if we want to kill Lady Vash and her minions, we have to enter her lair, the Serpent Shrine Cavern. However, its entrance is blocked by a magical waterfall, and the only one that can open it is Sharthus the Heretic. The Naga is imprisoned in the heroic version of the Slave Pens. Unfortunately for us, his shackles are enchanted and require two signets. The Earth Signet found in Gruul the Dragon Slayer, and the Fire Signet found in Nightbane. Obtaining the Earth Signet will just have us kill Gruul with a rate of 24 other people and looting it from his corpse. For the Fire One, we'll have to summon and defeat the optional boss in Karazhan, Nightbane. To summon Nightbane, we need to finish a quest line that we can start after getting honored with the Violent Hold faction by killing trash mobs and bosses in Karazhan. We then head to Archmaid Alturius, who will ask us to find Medivh's journal. The last person who knows about it is Ravion, who we can find in the Guardian's Library after defeating the Curator. Ravian will have us talk to the human next to him, Kamsis. He'll tell us that the journal's in the possession of the Shade of Iran. Therefore, we go to the poor, tortured soul, defeat him, then loot him for the journal. With Medivh's journal, we go to the Master's Terrace and read it to witness some memories of the Fallen Guardian. As a matter of fact, we see him cast a powerful spell on the dragon Archonagos who came to warn him about Sargeras' corruption. The poor worm is burned from within, and we can deduce that this has been transformed into Nightbane. Back with the Archmage Alturus, he asks us to dig up the past and obtain a charred bone fragment in Deadwing Pass from the remains of Arcanagos. 
With it in our bags, Alteris will send us to Area 52 to seek out the aid of his colleague, Kalena Lathrid. The Kirintor mage will then ask us to find two books, the Book of Forgotten Names from Dark Weaver Sith in the Sethic Halls, and the Tome of Dust that we ripped from the dead body of the Grand Warlock Nether Curse in the Shattered Halls. After acquiring the book, Kalena crafts a blackened urn and asks us to revive Arkanagos as Nightbane and defeat him in the Master's Terrace in Karazhan. Therefore, we venture once again in the Cursed Tower, fight the reanimated dragon, and obtain the Blazing Signet. Going back to Sarkthis, we give him both the hard-earned signets, which lets him cast on us the Mark of Vash, which dispels the enchantment of the waterfall at the entrance of SSC and grants us access to the raid. With each attunement, the difficulty seems to spike quite a bit, and it was no easy feat to obtain the right to enter Tempest Keep and challenge the final boss, Kel'thas Sunstrider. Getting there is the culmination of two lengthy and quite hard questions. Let's start with the first one, the Cypher of Damnation. Going to their faction hub in Shadowman Valley, the player can begin the chain with the quest, The Hand of Gul'dan. This leads us to speak to Earthmender Torlock, who asks us to get him the essence of the enraged elementals of fire, earth, water, and air using a spirit totem. These spirits will mention a powerful spell, the Cypher of Damnation. Having no idea what it means, Torlock will send us to Oronach Tornhart, who he thinks might know a bit more about it. The old orc doesn't trust us at the slightest, and will test our prowess in classic World of Warcraft fashion, finding tubers with the help of boars and destroying Ravager eggs. With the small test complete, Oranok explains that he was a lieutenant of Gul'dan and that the spell we're seeking is the one used by the warlocks to sever the shamanistic link between the orcs and the elements of Draenor. However, and there is always a however, Illidan obtained the text when he took over the Temple of Karabor, now known as the Black Temple. He divided it into three parts. Oranok sends us after these three sons, who each went after one of the parts. Gromtor, first son of Oranok, has located the fragment he was tasked to find. He gives us the information we need and asks us to find it inside a Naga cave. We kill the guards, loot the key to the chest, and obtain it. After that, we head over to Artor, second son of Oranok, who will task us to kill demons around the Illidari point so we can get the Crystalline Key and his bow. We then defeat another demonic servant of Illidan, Veneratus the Many, and obtain his fragment of the cipher. The old orc will then send us after his third son, Borok, who has been keeping tabs on the Blood Elves guarding the last part. He explains that our objective will be hard to obtain, as the elves have been moving it around. He also tells us he has his eyes on the messenger who carries its location. However, our target is always followed by a guard. Luckily for us, the messenger is addicted to a certain plant, the Blood Thistle. We go to Shatrath to meet with a shady businessman who might know where to obtain the drug. Tobias the Filth Gorger will give us what we want in exchange for a rotten Arakoa egg, which we provide pretty easily. With the bundle of Blood Thistle in our bags, we prepare our cutting ambush. With our bait ready, Envoy Icarus will send off his bodyguard so he can sniff his blood thistle in peace. Sadly for the Thistlehead, we pounce on him and assassinate him and loot the Stormrage missive. Borak studies it and tasks the player to get a blood off disguise from the mobs in Eclipse Point. Once we have it, we can get the information we need from the Grand Commander Rusk. Finally, we can assemble a party and kill Rule the Darkener who will drop the third fragment. With the cipher complete, Orunak has one more task for us, summon and kill Suruk the Fire Lord to prevent another catastrophe. Therefore, we gather a group, travel to the Altar of Damnation, and do the D. With that, we finish the quest chain and are ready to get to the next part. After completing the Cypher of Damnation, we receive a letter from Shatrath where Kadgar tells us that we did a good job with the Cypher of Damnation and that the Naru wanted to test our might in a series of trials. Adal explains that he fears that Kel'thas might use the Cypher of Damnation for nefarious deeds, and he needed our help to stop him. However, we can't enter haphazardly into the Tempest Keep, and we have to show Adal the extent of our mercy by heading to the heroic version of the Shattered Halls. There, we have to clear the Time Gauntlet and save the prisoners from the Shattered Hand Executioner. With his unused axe as proof of our good deed, we head back to Adal. Next up, our strength is tested by defeating Warlord Calithresh in Heroic Steam Vault and Murmur in Heroic Shadow Labyrinth. After showing Adal how strong we are, the Naru wants to test our tenacity. For that, we have to finish off Harbringer Skyris in the Architraz Heroic while protecting Milhouse Manastorm and ensuring his survival. Happy with our progress, Adal will give us one final trial, Mactheridon. We enter the raid, kill him, and we're done. With that, we get our Tempest Key that attunes us to the Tempest Keep, and the Phoenix Fire Brand, which is a useful item for tanking certain bosses like Leorthus the Blind or Illidan. To get inside the third instance in the Caverns of Time and relive the final climactic battle of Mount Hyjal, the player is given a very simple task by Sora Dormi get the Vials of Eternity. However, this was the hardest attunement to obtain during the original release for it required defeating Lady Fash and Kel'thas. And during the original release of the game, it took the first guild 73 days to get Vash's Vial and 130 days before obtaining the Vial held by Kel'thas. As Illidan once said, you are not prepared, and he was right. In fact, we can't get into the Halls of the Black Temple without doing the attunement questline first. Therefore, we have to go to Shadowmoon Valley and start there. 
The start of the questline will be slightly different if you chose to be the Aldor or the Scryers, but what we need to do is still the same. We learn that the secrets of the Temple of Karbor, down as a Black Temple, are written on a Drenai artifact, the Tablets of Bari. We're then sent to stop the efforts of the Ashtang and claim the tablet for ourselves, since they might be useful in our fight against Illidan. After obtaining 12 fragments, we learn about the existence of a medallion that granted the High Priest of Karbor unlimited access to the space, but its location is only known to Akama and his close circle. We're tasked with eliminating Oronu the Elder. On his body, we find a letter that's a great interest to our efforts, orders from Akama. We learn that the medallion has been split between four Ashtung Corruptors, so we hop on our flying mount and look for them around Shadowmoon Valley and kill them. With our four fragments in hand, we still can't enter the Black Temple. We're going to need to speak to Akama since he's in possession of half of the medallion. To do this, we have to go to the Warden's Cage and interrogate Sonoru about Akama, and surprisingly, we learn that the leader of the Ashtung Deathsworn was expecting us. We just need to prove our allegiance and kill the demon Xandrus, who has been tasked to keep an eye on Akama by Illidan. And in a plot twist, we learn that Akama has betrayed the demon hunter and is now keeping a facade of loyalty while plotting to undermine him. Once Akama is sure that we're not working for Illidan, he meets with us and explains that he has already foretold our arrival and our role in Illidan's demise. He also tells us that the medallion fragments we possess are replicas and the real thing is in his possession, except for the last piece. Akama sends us to rescue Udala from the Architraz since he knows its location. Sadly, when we find Udalo, he's been dead for a while, but he left us with precious information written on a piece of paper, Atamal. Going back to Akama, he deduces that the last piece of the medallion is located in the Atamal Terrence an old Draenei temple that's been overrun by fell orcs under Illidan's control. We travel there with a group, summon Shadow Lord Deathwell, and take him down. We take the Heart of Fury from him and go back to the Warden's Cage. Akama reforms Medallion and asks us to bring it to Adal as a token of his promise to fight Illidan when the time comes. The second part of the attunement starts inside Serpent Shrine Caverns. After killing Fathom Lord Carathras, one of Akama's underlings appears, the Seer Ulam. He has been tortured because Illidan started getting suspicious about the leader of the Broken. The seer tells us to warn Akama before taking his own life so the secret of the Ashtung betrayal isn't compromised. Learning about what happened, Akama has a plan. But before we can start the assault of the Black Temple, we have to help him keep Illidan's trust. For that, we enter Tempest Keep and kill Alar while under the disguise as an Ashtung broken. With that, we make sure that Illidan's eyes are focused towards Kelthos and we can get to the next step of our journey. For that, we have to obtain a phylactery from Rage Winterchill, a lich that died during the final assault on Mount Hyjal. Why do we need it? Akama himself doesn't know, as he just saw the item in one of his visions. Therefore, we go to the Caverns of Time, where we fight a Rage Winterchill, the first boss of battle for Mount Hyjal Raid. We defeat him and obtain the Time Phase Phylactery. Akama realizes that it can help him free his soul that's under Illidan's control. With that, we can make the final preparations on our attack on the Black Temple. We then go to a doll who shows us a vision of the battle outside the Black Temple, led by another Naru. We go there and find Ziri leading the charge. And this is the distraction Akama needed to start our infiltration of Illidan's stronghold. After talking to it, we complete the quest and obtain the Medallion of Karabor, signaling the end of the attunement to the Black Temple. And with that, we cover the journeys any adventurer had to take during the Burning Crusade in order to do most of the endgame content. A barrier of entry that most old casual players didn't overcome. And that's why attunements were abandoned starting the following expansion, Wrath of the Lich King, and haven't come back since.